Hey there, crypto friends. Thanks again for joining me here for another episode of the Stash My Crypto podcast. It's been a little while since we had a podcast out. It's been a very busy summer, busy uh, fourth quarter here, but I'm happy to have my good buddy Coldy online with me today. What's going on, man? How's it going? Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. So uh, we d- we go way back, man. You know, before crypto, before there was anything even conceived of Bitcoin, we actually knew each other, and it's kind of crazy how things circled back around, and now we're kind of both doing a little bit of stuff in a similar industry. So I, I, th- I don't know. It's kind of interesting how things kind of do that, you know? Yeah, it's a definitely a small world. And as soon as I saw your face pop up, I said, oh, I know that guy. I got to <laughs> talk to him. So it's it's good to see you back around. Yeah, for sure, man. Well, hey, you know, uh, let's just dive right into this. Uh, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself and what you do, and then I we, we, I want to talk about like you know cryptocurrencies. But first, I just want to know have everyone know a little bit about you yourself as an artist. Sure. Yeah. My name is Coldy. I'm a um, a commercial artist. I'm also um, a fine artist. I do gallery shows. I've been doing them for about uh, about ten years, uh, pre Bitcoin and all of that. I've uh, focused in on uh, stereoscopics, Mm -hmm. which uses 3D glasses. And so all my pictures have depth to them, which is a little bit unique in the traditional gallery sense. So it was kind of a, um, actually a perfect uh, kind of transition between my art and technology. When I started, uh, I went to my first uh, crypto show in uh, in the Bay, uh, maybe a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. And I just had, my lenticulars and my 3d stuff and a couple cryptos and and everybody just they they saw the merge of art and technology and um it's been fun ever since just experimenting and and making art it's great yeah and so you know a lot of times you know i've had other artists on the channel here and you know coming from a little bit of a different world where, you know, you work in kind of a production environment, which is, you know, kind of a similar, you know, environment that I work in as well. You know, it's it's a little bit of a different beast than when you're just doing just fine art, right? And so I think that's pretty cool to have uh, the, both perspectives here, you know, how you can kind of, you know, understand how technology and art merges and you kind of sit in that, that nice little crux between the two, you know? Yeah, so um, I'm also an art director, so I kind of, you have like a multi-tier brain, so a lot of times I'm there, if there's a deadline, I know how to produce things quickly and yeah. self edit and do all that. And then when it comes to art time, it helps because I can also self edit as I'm just being creative and experimenting. Right. I can kind of iterate in my brain. And when I sit down, I can kind of get to a solution better, whether, whether it's, you know, the, what I want or not, I, I, I can kind of whittle my time down a little bit more quickly. Right. Yeah, so so maybe not you know you're still in that creative process, but you're not maybe spending so much you know uh, downtime or white space time, I'll call it, <laughs> yeah. uh, in, in that kind of creative process. I totally get that. Yeah, very. Cool, yeah, it's man. been it's been good. Um, I've been kind of trying to actually focus my time a little bit more as well inside of crypto space because mm-hmm. there's there's a thousand different pieces of art I could just do about what's going on. Yeah, but I've I've really kind of try to focus in on a, a portrait series I'm doing. Um, it's called Decentralize, and it's um, a decentralized portrait series. So basically, let me show you one. Well, wait, hold um, on. I don't, I don't want to give the goods away yet. Just before, oh, sure, okay. before we get you, I, I, want to see, I want to hear your story about how you learned about Bitcoin for the first time and like what was it about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general that really, you know, made you want to go in this direction with your art? I mean, in general, you know, was it did you it was investing or like how how, how did you get into that that whole, you know, mantra of, of Bitcoin? So this happened um, probably back in 2009, 2010. I'm not that OG, but my cousin told me about it at Christmas. Yeah. And nice. I never see him. And um, he said, hey, old cousin, you know, come, let me tell you about what I'm doing. And they were mining uh, Bitcoin out of their dorms at MIT. Yeah. And he said, we, you know, we're making this digital money and we don't get a full one every day, but we get about a half of one every day. And that meant nothing to me. Absolutely nothing. And I, if I took grandma's uh, Christmas money that year, I would be in a different life. Yeah. But, you know, all things happen for a reason. It planted a seed and, you know, it must have been, you know, 
five or six years later, I just randomly stumbled onto it again. Uh, not by anybody telling me I was just, yeah. you know, clicking around and, and, and that little seed was like, Oh yeah, that's what my cousin told me about. And then I just, then I was a little bit more informed and just kind of like, then I got it right. and then kind of jumped in. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, I have, I have a little bit of a similar story. I mean, I, nobody actually told me about it in the in the, fir- the first time I saw it. It was just randomly just, you know, trolling around the internet a little bit. And I was like, oh, cool, digital money. That's interesting. And then I followed a link and went to a website, was talking about it. And then there was like Bitcoin and Litecoin. And I was like, there's two coins? No, man, that's, that's some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it was Ether. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. This was before Ethereum when when that, that okay. was twenty thirteen when I first saw that, and then uh, you know I kind of was like, man. And then uh, the end of or the beginning of twenty fourteen was when I really took a second look, and it was like, oh wow, okay, this is this is actually really cool, and there's a lot more to it than just like it's digital money, you know, uh, sure. which is kind of everyone's first thing, like, oh, that's okay, digital money, yeah, you know, nice. So you know, now that you've kind of made this merger, you know, between, you know, kind of cryptocurrency and, you know, some of your art pieces. Uh, let's talk a little bit more now about the awesome, amazing art you're doing and, and show some of that cool stuff off because I got a chance to see this and, and uh, talk with you a little bit of, uh, during Bitcoin 2019 conference. And it was really cool to see this stuff like right there, you know, in, in my face, man. And, and I was, uh, I think uh, my buddy Beatles, Crypto Beatles was at your booth too. And we were all kind of talking about it, and he was, he was buying a couple of your pieces and uh, just, it's, it's really interesting. So yeah, go now, dive into that now. I want to know all about that and how you, what your inspiration was for this series uh, that you're working on. Okay. Yeah. So, um, like I was saying, it's called decentralized and it's really a play off of the world de- decentralized. Mm-hmm. So it's a portrait series where what I did was I took, uh, my first person was Vitalik. So yeah. I took yeah. 10 different pictures of Vitalik and I clipped each, um, clipped the pictures apart. So one of them had an ear on one of them, one had a forehead, the nose and the eyes, and I reassembled them into a new portrait. Yeah, very Picasso. So let me I'll hold this one up. So this is yeah. this is Vitalik. And the video doesn't really show it off, but this is a, a lenticular yeah. 3D. So what happens is there's actually depth when you look at it in person. The mm-hmm. nose pops out, the head, it all has volume to it. So this is something I've been doing for about 10 years um, on my own, just making art. So once I kind of wrap my head around crypto, I've been doing portraits of, um, let's see, I've done Vitalik, I've done Andreas Antonopoulos. The Andreas one is really cool. I love that one. This man. one actually kind of shows off a little bit. Yeah. You kind of see it moving back and forth. Um, I've done John McAfee. I just did the Winkle Boss Twins. I released that yesterday. That was a fun one. Awesome. Um, yeah, so it's been super fun and totally experimental, and there's no rules which is kind of where I like to play at. I don't want to be constrained by expectations or um, what anybody else has done. That way I can totally let my freak flag fly high and just like see what comes up. Yeah, I mean, and that's what art is really about, you know, when you get into this, uh, you know, coming from the production world, it, it, a lot of times really that creative thing, you know, that creative beast is uh, always has to be steered in a specific direction because there is a goal but with you know something you're doing on your own like that, I think that's pretty cool to be able to have that freedom to just do whatever you think is cool, whatever you enjoy doing, you know. And obviously, it's made an impact, right? People like what you're doing. Yeah, you've been making, uh, you know, been selling this art. You've been making NFTs, what I've seen, and, and and putting those out as well. So talk a little bit about that and how you've kind of you know monetized a little bit of what you're doing and and, and the response that people are, are giving to you on this. It's really fascinating because before I was doing NFTs, which if people who don't know, it's a non-fungible token. So it's rare digital art that's on the blockchain. Mm-hmm. So before that, I would have to um, either set up my own art show or get juried into a, a larger exhibition. Sure. And that whole process takes months. It's a pain you know, in the ass. The pain in the ass. And if, if everything goes well, we're talking if all the stars align and you sell your piece of art, you're given 50% to the gallery. So right off the top, they're making as much as me, which always kind of irked me. You know, it was just kind of like, I, I made the thing, you sold it, but come on, like, is it really a split? So when I started doing NFTs, I'm selling them on super rare and uh, rare art labs. And 
the commission is to me it's around 80 percent which is just i mean that's way better and i'm selling worldwide 24 mm-hmm. 7. That's- so i mean there's right now i don't even enter real like standard art shows anymore i i don't see a, a need or a reason my people aren't there like yes yeah. my people are are us the people who are you know at shows um with you know people want to buy things with ethereum you don't find those people at many art galleries right i mean not I yet like, not yet and that's i think why a big reason of why i'm making art as well mm-hmm. is because i am able to onboard people when i meet somebody and i tell them about the digitals and they um they ask me how to get them and i kind of talk to them about you know i start very high level and then if they're interested in doing that i'm able to actually help onboard a new art collector into the space yeah which is a perfect first use case i think it, it really is you know when you talk about it you know and and digital scarcity essentially is what, what is being created here you know you create this this you know one of a kind work and then you can you know issue a limited amount of tokens that represent that work or just one token which i know you've done i think you've done both right you've done it where you've had a limited run of something and just also one unique one right yeah so when i first started with rare art labs they were really one of the first guys on the block doing this type of thing Mm -hmm. and they issue erc 20 tokens Mm -hmm. so this was kind of before 721s came out Mm -hmm. and in that series it was a lot of additions and it's interesting now on super rare i only do one of ones Mm -hmm. and the demand is exponentially higher for a piece of art that there's only one of. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's plenty of people doing well selling editions of 10 or 25. Mm -hmm. It's just that experiment of, do I want, you know, if you're going to monetize it, do you want to find one collector who wants to pay you the full, you know, value of it? Or do you want to split that up into 25 people to, to do that? And there's a thousand different ways to sell it. I've found the most, um, interest and, um, like the serious collectors really want the one of ones. Yeah, no, and that's how it is. You know, when you talk about people who like to collect things, right? The rarer it is, the better. It, yeah. And and so if you can get something that is a one of one and it's something that you feel is desirable uh, to other people, then you're, I mean, you know, a little bit speculating that it's going to go up in value. That's what all the entire art world essentially does. Yeah. I mean, yeah. people buy things, they like it, they love the artist, but at the same time, you know, I think that they're especially if you're paying top dollar. You know, they're thinking, hey, this is going to be uh, something that is going to be unique in the in the in the future. And and you know, in art in general, that's always been the case. Anytime you produce a work of art, because it was it was something you couldn't necessarily replicate until the digital age. You know, you did a painting, and it's like, well, I only have one of these paintings. I can't, you know, I, even if I try and do the exact one again, it won't come out precisely exactly the same as the as the previous one. It could probably be almost pretty close, almost imperceptible, but to like an, a fine art person, you know. I'm sure they'd be able to spot the differences. And I think that's one of the cool things about uh, being able to do something digital uh, like this because, you know, your work re- resides in kind of that, like I said, that that, that like kind of crux between the digital and, and the and the real life because, you know, you, you can you have, you could, ha- you could also have a, a real life uh, representation of that. So is that something you've ever done where you had like an NFT uh, for a piece of uh, physical art and there was only one of that physical art ever made and then you had an NFT connected to it? I personally haven't. That's kind of a, a big, kind of a, um, I wouldn't say a sticky issue, but there's, there's people have different views on that. Mm-hmm. I have a hard time in my mind thinking that if I were to sell somebody a digital token and a physical piece of art, mm-hmm. ensuring that those two stay together. Yeah. I can't, I can't verify that throughout history. Yeah. And different people have different uh, opinions on that, but until I can have like, an RFID that proves proximity or something that I know they're connected. Mm -hmm. I just, I keep them separate and all the collectors know that you're getting the only digital version. There is a a physical version, but it's a separate piece of artwork. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And everyone, everyone understands that, but I would love to be able to, um, you know, merge the two in the future. If, if I felt comfortable that they were, 
going to be in the same hands, that would be awesome. Yeah, it, it's definitely a unique uh, situation. I was actually on a panel with a bunch of uh, fine art lawyers, people who were in that the thing. And this was like, you know, a couple of months ago, and that was essentially what we talked about. And there's like 40 people in the room, and they're all you know talking about, well, how how does that happen? How do you actually get in a physical piece? And, how, and I'm like, well, I don't have all the answers. All I'm saying is that there's a potential here for you know uh, um, more efficiency within the the within the whole space. And what is that solution? I'm not sure, but you know, definitely blockchain there's provide some sort of uh, hopefully basis for something like that here in the future. I think that'd be pretty cool as well. And and one of the things kind of separate from NFTs is just the art provenance. Yeah. There's there's a couple sites like Verisart. Um, right. They just got a huge funding round where, you know, you can, I can take my physical art and I've done this. Some of my larger lenticulars, the ones that are like, I would say like the higher echelon of, of what I'm selling. Yeah. I'll, I'll make a provenance record of that. Mm -hmm. And then when the, when it's sold, I can transfer that to yeah. them on the Bitcoin chain. So there is that, there is that, um, lineage, yeah. which isn't like, you don't have to trust a piece of paper or hearsay. Right. It, yeah. We talked the, about that too. Yep. Yeah. So I think that is probably the, the most, understandable for the traditional art mm -hmm. space right now which is great whatever yeah. gets people in in is great yeah and we, we yeah, and it kind of went into this like well what if what about the black market and then people you know and, and there's so there's so many things there but it's it is like i think there's a lot of possibilities there uh in the future for that so i definitely agree with you on that one so um you know hey you know my one of my last questions here i wanted to go over with you uh, go over with you is <laughs> Uh, how do you feel art like this affects an emerging industry like cryptocurrency? Do you feel that it's important? Do you feel that it like, drives mass adoption or, you know, that it gives, it lends more credibility to it? How do you feel, you know, uh, art like this, you know, helps an emerging, you know, class of stuff? I think that we're, we're all kind of in this ecosystem together where we're all doing our own little thing to create this mass adoption. Right. And it started off with the programmers uh, the cypherpunks, all, all the guys that did the serious, heavy, heavy, heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. And as an artist, I take a lot of responsibility of giving a visual representation of, of what's going on. I don't, you know, I don't know how to, I don't know how to code. I don't know how to do that type of stuff, but I can do my best to make a picture yeah. that might be able to speak to somebody to help them connect the dots or help them feel um, part of this all. And, you know, if I can make art that's either on somebody's wall or they collect digitally, that makes them feel empowered. And I'm part of this whole movement, maybe in 10 years, we can all look back and we can look at all these different artists that are doing amazing things. You know, we have oil painters, we have, you know, digital artists, we have uh, people working with GANs, yeah. like computer, like some, there's all kinds of different people that are chipping in. And I think those all have spider webs out to different groups mm -hmm. and i think together that art is going to mean something more than we think it does right now because mm -hmm. right now i'm just we're all just having fun and making art because that's what we do but i think there is always with any movement like a historical context that i think is being built as we speak yeah, you may. I, I like the analogy you made with the spider web. That's that's a great kind of analogy. If you know every little piece of art, every little thing we're doing that that you know can that is that go, it has webs that go outside of the industry itself as the echo chamber. You know, it's it, it helps to bring maybe a few more people in and and snag a couple more people into the web of crypto. I don't mean to, I don't mean to make it seem like maniacal or anything, but you know, sure. just be able to to get people to understand and see that and. I think art really does lend a lot of legitimacy to a movement like this. And you're right. A lot of times you look back at some of these past artistic movements, you know, they weren't sitting in the middle of the movement saying, oh, my God, guys, in 150 years, this is going to be huge. You yeah. know, everyone's going to love the, you know, the, 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 you know, and so I think that, you know, you're right there. I think that we could look back on this at some day and say, oh, wow, you know, we didn't realize the impact we're making then. But it's very clear once you zoom out of the picture a little bit. And how much it actually affected things and, and helped to connect people, you know? Yeah. And, and at the same time, I mean, I, I'll be the first to say I'm a guinea pig to all of this. And I take chances all the time. Yeah. And, I, and I think as hard as I can, whether, you know, I should go down a road. And, and there's been times where I've said, hey, why don't we, why not take a chance with so and so platform or doing something? And, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out. But that's part of why we're here is to almost be the first testers. 
yeah. for, for what's going on and just ride the wave. And I, I have met so many brilliant programmers at these shows and I just love talking to them and hearing what they're doing. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm willfully ready to create and, and, you know, there's like, um, DAOs coming out, like art, artistic DAOs, mm -hmm. like these things like never have existed in, in history, but let's try it out. Let's see what happens. Why not? I'm right there with you, man. That's one of, one of the things I love about crypto too, is being able to talk with all these amazing people who seem to be on a similar page, no matter how different their background is and, you know, where they're, where they're working in the industry. So, um, it really makes it enjoyable. Yep. I agree. Cool. Hey, uh, Coldy, man, thanks so much for coming on here, talking art with me, talking Bitcoin and kind of your thoughts on the art industry and the merging in Bitcoin. I uh, really appreciate it, man. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. It's good to see you back around. Yeah, definitely, man. All right. Until next time, guys, stash that crypto, friends.